You've probably heard that when you're traveling to a different country, the locals truly appreciate it when you at least try to speak their language. With Rosetta Stone, you can do even better by becoming proficient in any of 25 different languages. For a limited time, Rosetta Stone gives you access to all 25 at once by offering a lifetime membership for 50% off. That's not annually. That's a one-time payment. So visit rosettastone.com now and save 50%. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free. Shopify.com slash podcast free. Well, howdy there, buckaroos. And welcome to the wildest podcast in the wilderness. And another root and tootin' edition of AFK Winninia. Solo episode, baby. Hold on to your butts, because today we're stepping into the bull ring to unpack the jaw-dropping news that's been shaking the foundations of the streaming realm. Twitch's colossal layoffs. Is it the final chapter for Twitch? Is streaming... Relax, folks. We're we'll about to dive into the nitty-gritty and break down the future of streaming, so kick back, relax, and let's get ready to dish on the latest industry bombshell. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to start with uh, start with a little something lighter than, you know, obviously Twitch layoffs, etc. We're going to hop into the taper fade trend that's been just taking taking the internet by storm. I have, um, you know, I honestly think that as a, as a content creator that's been doing this, I mean, I've been doing this for forever, right? I feel like I've been doing this my entire life. 32 years old, I feel like, you know, I've been streaming for almost 12 years now. And I really do feel like, especially with TikTok and, you know, YouTube shorts and the way that short form content kind of just takes off. You have no idea what's going to become a trend, right? It just happens, right? Like one person or a group of people upload a video to a sound or, you know, just something happens and it just becomes this like just this meme and it completely just takes over. And I've learned to just lean into it as quickly as possible uh, and always, always lean into it. I learned my lesson back in the day. I learned my lesson when I was blowing up in Fortnite and like PewDiePie, I don't even know what happened. Like uh, someone, someone said I had a Ligma, right? Ligma, just like dude, the, the, the cringest, like light, most lighthearted, stupidest joke of all time. Something so simple as, oh, Ninja has Ligma. And then PewDiePie did a video on it. Uh, not a whole video on it, but it was like a clip or something. And for some reason, I didn't lean into the meme for some reason, dude. I was like mad. I was getting mad. People kept coming to the chat and they're like, yo, dude, how's Ligma? And I'd be like, hey, fuck you, man. I don't have Ligma, bro. Like, that's so stupid. And for some, dude, and, and it just, it just fueled the fire and it made people even troll me even more. And it was the cringest thing in the world that like me not leaning into it was the cringest thing in the world. I learned my lesson. Fast forward a couple years later, I flossed at New Year's, right? No one flossed with me on the main stage. You know, mind you, it was like, you know, minus 10 degrees and freezing in New York uh, and raining, which, you know, I don't really care. But I mean, dude, the second I got back to my uh, the second I got back to the studio and I had my phone in my hand, the first thing I did was tweet out. Wow. That was like the most embarrassing moment of my life. Right. Like just leaning into it, like note to self, don't ever floss in, in, New, York, in New York again. Just leaning into the meme. And, you know, everyone, dude, like, I don't get made fun of, right? Dude, if you make fun of yourself first, it's like no one's going to keep making fun of somebody that makes fun of themselves. It's, it's like psychology. Yeah. I mean, lean into that meme so hard. And, you know, I love it now. It's a, it's a, it's a whole thing. Not seen enough movement. It's hilarious, right? All jokes. Fast forward, fast forward to imagine if Ninja got a low taper fade. All right. So there's this artist named Eric Doa. He's actually really, like really talented. I've been listening to his music a lot lately. He was going through a 
like he was just on TikTok live or Twitch. I don't even know where he was live, but he was just, you know, pumping out like hooks and just to this beat. And he was just kept singing and singing. And I don't know how long he was singing for, but eventually randomly he just goes, imagine if Ninja got a low taper fade. And it just blew up like that little clip. It was like a 12 second clip. It just went mega viral. No idea why. I, and this is a, it took a day for this to happen. And again, like, dude, he didn't like go live on this and was like, dude, I'm going to drop this line. It's going to be great. Like, I think he, he was just spitballing. Boom, it came out. And in my TikTok chat, my Twitter, like next morning I wake up, I still haven't like checked TikTok yet because I don't really go on TikTok until like the, at, until night. And yeah, dude, it's just everywhere, right? Like my, my, my Twitch chat, my YouTube chat, my TikTok chat, everyone's just like, yo, dude, and she getting a low taper fade. I'm just like, what? Like, I, you know, at first I was just like ignoring it. Then I started seeing it more and more and more and more and more. I'm like, dude, what is happening? And then finally, you know, my assistant Andre, my lovely assistant Andre, he wakes up, he's in the chat, and then he sends me you know, the, the clip that everyone's talking about. And it's, dude, it's just, it was the catchiest thing ever. And I'm just like, bro, I don't even know what that is, right? So if I Google what it is, like low taper fade, and it's obviously it's just a haircut, right? It's just a style haircut. And I was like, uh, this, I mean, this is kind of sick. I've never gotten, I've never gotten a, a haircut like this before, right? Like all my haircuts are usually pretty generic. It's just like a trim, you know, blended up to, to my hair, the top of my head. And yeah, it's, it's nothing crazy. And then I decided, I was like, dude, I want to get this haircut, right? We're going to lean, we're going to lean aggressively into the meme per usual, right? I, I wasted no time and I ended up getting a haircut that night. I got a low taper fade that night. I hit up my hairstylist, Becky, who is a close friend of ours, a close family friend of ours. She does amazing work. Um, she colors my hair and obviously always does a great job cutting it. But she's never done a hairstyle like this before. She's never cut men's hair. You know, it's, it's, like, it's, like, a, it's like barber level stuff, right? And, you know, she's a hairstylist. So she did a great job. I, I believe what I have is a taper fade, which is, again, it's fine. It, it worked. It worked well enough. It leaned into the meme. And, it, you know, I mean, everyone loved it. My wife loves it. My friends love it. And, you know, the internet loves it. I immediately duetted the video and like duetted the video with the song, showed off the hairstyle. That video went viral. Then, then dude, the Brooklyn Nets upload, like started using the sound and memed it. And then the Cleveland Cavaliers TikTok memed it. I mean, everyone is just memeing this like sound bite. And it's crazy, dude. Like, I, I, it's crazy. I'm still seeing it. I'm still seeing like viral clips that are doing incredibly well numbers wise just all over my for you page and it's amazing dude i love it i talked about this in my stream the other day and like, normally i am i feel like when i trend in some way it's usually people joshing on me or making fun of me and it's never just like kind heartedness or people like gassing me up anymore you know no one likes to root for the guy who's already on top or has you know been on top so you know everyone loves an underdog so when this happens I always like it always warms my heart. It feels really good to be on like the cool side of a trend where, you know, I'm just having a good time. So that's lovely. I, I love again, love the I love the way it looks. I love the way it feels. It's it's it sucks because it's actually really cold here in Florida right now. Uh, and I was also in Detroit for the Lions game. And it was dude, am I, I've never had my I've always had hair on like these parts of my head. So I'm so cold. Like it's it's crazy. It just cuts right through. So uh, I'm much colder when I'm out and about, which I don't like, but um, I love the way it looks. It's, um, you know, I've been working out a lot more lately uh, this month, um, doing dry January, et cetera, all that stuff. So it's, it's nice to not like overheat when I'm you know working out and hitting the treadmill and stuff like that. So that's good. That's cool. And uh, yeah, again, the wife loves it. So low taper fade. We're just, uh, you know, we're just leaning. We're just going to continue to lean into it. And I'll probably, again, it's not an actual little taper fade, it's a taper fade, but I will 100% uh, probably try to reach out to a barber and uh, and go for that next time. Like, and just go there and be like, yo, give me like a, give me like a legit low taper fade. Let's rock this. So I'm excited about that. And that's that. That's the low taper fade era uh, of Nina. I love it. You know, again, you can never predict these memes. You just have to, you know, I always tell people you just got to roll with it. Um, Whenever stuff like this happens, it's huge. If you if you go against the grain, it's never good. And there's no reason to also. So, yeah, lean into the memes. If you're a content creator, always it's it's definitely the play. All right, moving on to our lion's corner. Come on. 
you already know, baby. Detroit Lions. We won our first playoff game in 30 years. We won our first home playoff game at Ford Field ever because we've never hosted at Ford Field before. And the game, it was literally the best game on. It was the best game all uh, uh, all wild card. It was the only game that wasn't a blowout. And we won by one. Just an absolute nail biter. An incredible experience. And for those who don't know, of course, if this is your first time listening and you don't know who I am. I'm a diehard Lions fan. Detroit all the way. And I ended up flying out my entire family from Illinois. I flew them out to Detroit. I flew from Florida to Detroit to meet them there. And we just watched the game, baby. We watched the game. It was electric. It was so much fun. And just the energy at Ford Field was out of this world. Like we were getting loud on every single play. First down, we were screaming on defense. Second down, we were screaming on defense. Third down, you, dude, I, I almost passed out from how much I was screaming to try to to try to mess up Matthew Stafford, which by the way, didn't really work because he had the game. I mean, he just had an incredible game. He just absolutely dominated regardless of how loud we were. However, in the second half, we did get so loud that, that Sean McVay had to use two timeouts before the fourth quarter, leaving the Rams with only one timeout in a crucial situation where they needed all three. So that was sensational. That was amazing. Dude, the Lions fans just showed up. They showed up. My family had an absolute blast. Everyone loved it. I, you know, I wouldn't change anything for the world. We won our first, uh, our first home game, our first playoff game in God knows how long. You know, broke a massive streak. Um, and, 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 you know, we look good doing it. It's absolutely astonishing. We're, you know, when we're in unprecedented times, unprecedented times. And I couldn't, I truly couldn't be happier. So to all the Lions fans out there who have been waiting forever for this to happen, it's happening. We did it. Anything can happen. So... You've probably heard that when you're traveling to a different country, the locals truly appreciate it when you at least try to speak their language. With Rosetta Stone, you can do even better by becoming proficient in any of 25 different languages. For a limited time, Rosetta Stone gives you access to all 25 at once by offering a lifetime membership for 50% off. That's not annually. That's a one-time payment. So visit rosettastone.com now and save 50%. NFL playoffs are here. And listen up, NFL fans. DraftKings Sportsbook is hooking you up big time. DraftKings is the official sports betting partner of the NFL playoffs, and they've got an insane offer for all of you new customers. If you throw down just five bucks on any game, you get 200 instantly in bonus bets. This deal is next level. I'm loving all these lines. I mean, the Packers are minus 108 plus nine and a half. The Texans are minus 110 plus nine and a half. I mean, these lines out here are great, guys. Dive into the heart pounding NFL playoffs action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Just remember to use code Ninja when you sign up. That's N I N J A to unlock this epic offer. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code Ninja. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1 800 Gambler or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gaming resources. to get to the main event the main meat and taters okay the main meat and taters which is twitch layoffs so for those of you don't know twitch cut its workforce by 35 percent all right resulting 
in layoffs over 500 employees. The decision that this decision comes after a year of concerns over losses with Twitch executives leaving the company in recent months. My initial reaction is I do believe that the CEO, Dan knows what he's talking about and knows what he's doing. I do. I, I, after sitting down with him, you know, him pretty much being the catalyst to making sure that every like multicasting, you know, making that happen, allowing people to stream everywhere at the same time uh, and, and be able to make revenue and, and be a partnership. Like, a lot like all these things just dan he, he's just not, I, again I, I feel like twitch is in the right hands laying off people is never okay i mean okay i don't want to say it's never okay listen it, it needs to happen at the end of the day these companies it's a business right they need to make money and the fact that they've been around since justin tv and they've been in it for like almost 12 years and they haven't been profitable i mean think about that that's crazy that's absolutely insane they, they need to figure something out and you know usually when you're laying off people like i mean look what look what elon musk did with twitter right like the company can function without how many employees were there essentially, right? You know, I hate to see all these employees obviously go. I hope that they were taken care of, right? With like severance. And I'm sure that they'll land on their feet. They're talented enough to get a job at Twitch to begin with. I'm sure that they'll be okay. That being said, it's it, it, it's astonishing to me that still they're not profitable. And, and, and it almost begs the question, can they even, like, can they even, like, can they do it? Can, can, can you know, having a streaming platform even become is it even possible to become profitable i mean look, look what happened to mixer right twitch's revenue hit 2.8 billion in 2022 so the layoffs raised some eyebrows in my opinion what might be the driving factors behind this move again i mean just because they made 2.8 like god knows how much it costs to run the service even though amazon owns aws i don't know like this is me kind of like speculating even though amazon owns aws like those servers like at the end of the day like they still cost something to someone right so they can't they're, they're not just you know free so yeah i mean i think that it's just just something that has to be done i mean they've, they've, they've cut revenue splits and they're doing everything they can to become profitable and like again at the end of the day as a streamer if you want to make revenue like play some ads dude you'll make your revenue that way i promise you ad revenue is is king it always has been for streaming like it always has been i mean i've been making great ad revenue i've been making great money on on revenue ad revenue since justin tv i've been saying this for a very long time like you almost have an advantage if you're a smaller streamer because your audience is more, you're like, you're closer with your audience. You have a closer connection and they almost want you to play ads for like, I guarantee you, you just troll them. You're like, all right, we're going to play ads because I need money. Like they'll be like, play ads, play ads. Yes, please play ads. Like we want to see ads because at the end of the day, your viewership and your audience, like they love you and they want you to be successful because if they enjoy your stream, they want you to be able to make enough money to keep streaming and stream as much as possible. So it literally just makes sense. And yeah, I mean, Twitch's revenue model involves ads, subscriptions, and user contributions. What changes, if any, do you anticipate for streamers following these layoffs? I don't anticipate anything changing in terms of how streamers can make money. I mean, there's already a lot of incentives and ways for them to make money with how profitable ad revenue is. If you're just playing, you know, three minutes of ads an hour, like people would be surprised how much money you can make. So this is, you know, if you're somehow a streamer listening to this and you're, you know, pulling a couple hundred viewers or more, like telling you. Just test it out for a month. I told, I, I literally told Cloxy this the other day. Cloxy was one of those guys, love him to death. You know, one of my best friends, and he's just like, yeah, I don't play ads. You know, it's just, uh, you know, yeah, I, I don't want my, I don't want my viewers to watch ads and things like that. And it's like, I, I get it, but then I told him, I was like, Dennis, listen to me, man. Like, just try it. I was like, play ads for a month, play ads for a single month, and then, and then talk to me, right? See how much money that you're missing out on because you don't play them. And, and, and like he did it for a month and he was just like, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot, dude. I should been playing ads this whole time. I'm like, I told you. And what happened to his viewers? His viewership didn't drop at all. Retention didn't drop. It didn't drop. And I mean, he's still killing it. So I think there's just this bad stigma around it. And I think a lot more people are getting used to, to playing them now as streamers. And you should, because I mean, it's just what has to happen, right? If you're, if you're trying to be profitable as, as a streamer as well and, and make money, like it just needs to happen. So it just needs to happen. So get used to it. Um, how does the layoffs affect broader challenges with the streaming industry? Does this have any ramifications for kick YouTube, TikTok streaming again? Like Twitch is always, in my opinion, Twitch is king of streaming. It always has been like even YouTube. There's so much, this is what Dan, uh, this is how Dan described it. There's so much eye candy when you're watching a YouTube streamer, right? You're streaming on YouTube it, all, all on the left side and the right side. If you're not full screen, there's like videos that they want you to click on. Whether it be even that streamer's videos or sometimes someone else's like in terms of retention, Twitch really, in my opinion, is still a king when it comes to, when it comes to that. Yeah, I don't, I just don't, I don't see kick or 
or I don't see any of those companies like taking over. Like maybe, t- maybe TikTok, like if they take it serious, but they just don't, right? Like TikTok is still only a mobile streaming platform. I've been saying that they need to be, find a way to be able to watch streams like on like via desktop and they just, they haven't added it. It's, um, I just don't, yeah, I just don't think they, I don't know if they want, if they wanted to do something, they would. And maybe it'll happen, you know, down the road, but it's just, it's too automated, right? Like I get my, like my account on, on TikTok gets banned like consistently for, for no reason, right? It'll say, it'll say guideline, guideline violations, harassment and stuff like that. And it's like, what it's like, I'm not even, I'm like, I'm solo, I'm playing alone and I'm not even talking to my viewers in, in TikTok. Like, how am I getting, so like it, it's, it's way too automated. You just get screwed over for no reason. All people have to do is mass report a channel sometimes or like if there are bots spamming your chat it'll it'll just automatically it's so it's just so not mainstreamed right i again i think that the the, the layoffs won't i i think you won't even notice it personally i think you won't even notice it uh with platforms like twitch facing financial challenges do you think this opens the door for newer streaming platforms to rise or does it tighten the competition i think that if streaming if creating a streaming platform was e- was easily profitable or or it just made sense, I think you'd see them everywhere. But I think it's the uh, it's pretty much the opposite. You have Kick, Twitch, YouTube. It's there. There isn't a you know. It's not like they're everywhere. They're not just sprouting up. It's kind of like internet companies, right? Like, dude, the infrastructure that you need and and the cost of that is just it's astronomical. It's astronomical. So. No, I don't think I don't see I don't see the competition getting crazier. Um, I think that you know you'll see these just these Goliaths continue to battle it out until you know maybe like one might come in the future, like one uh, you know some power some power people will get together and and just come up with this platform that takes everything by storm. And but I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. Every new year, it's tradition to set new goals. Well, imagine setting a goal now that lasts the rest of your life. For a limited time, Rosetta Stone is offering a lifetime membership for just 50% off. That's not an annual payment. That's a one-time payment. You get full access to 25 languages and with it, access to the world one language at a time. Visit rosettastone.com now and save 50%. That's 50% off a lifetime membership. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. We're going AFK with Ninja What's he gonna say? As someone who has witnessed the evolution of Twitch What advice would you give aspiring streamers In light of the recent industry developments? I mean, I think what I would say And it's kind of what I've been saying I've been saying this for a long time This is actually so interesting that this is in the document Because People came up to me or people have talked to me and they're like, yo, man, what do you think about like streaming nowadays? Do you think it's, uh, you know, it's still profitable? Do you think, you know, it's good for, for newer, newer streamers? Can, can we still make it? And I mean, you got to look at like, look at Jinxie, look at Queso. There are, there are just people absolutely blowing up, like blowing up and they've been at it for a long time, but it, yeah, it's just crazy. It's crazy. It, it, it absolutely, you will always be able to, to make it as a streamer, if you have what it takes, if you have the talent, if you're funny enough, if you're entertaining enough, you just have to use social media. You just have to use TikTok to your advantage, and and that'll blow you up the most. So, I'm I'm not worried. It's um, it'll always be. It, it, it might get it might get harder, right? But it still can happen. So, and you know, you might be able to. You still you can always build a community and make a living out of it. Given the competitive nature of streaming platforms, how crucial is it for these platforms to adapt to changing market dynamics while keeping content creators in mind? At the end of the day, 
a streaming play like at the end of the day it, it, dude you're playing you're playing video games or you're, you're reacting to content for a living or you know you're just a just chatting you're an IRL streamer. at the end of the day you're you're living the dream being able to do something like this and the sources of revenue have always been the same and you don't necessarily need to have content creators in mind because content creators also want to make money they want to make money too so like subscription base is always going to be a thing ad revenue is always going to be king and then you know donations and all those things like are, are, are separate and like extra just extra icing on the cake i think at the end of the day it's always it's up to the it's up to the streamer to optimize their revenue right using the platform that they have and the platform that, that is that is given to them by these companies right if you have if you have 50,000 viewers okay like and like you're you don't you know don't it would be silly to only solely rely on making revenue from from twitch right like wouldn't you want to develop merch and like right like like really thought, thoughtful and tasteful merch merchandise and then start making revenue on the side there and you know coming up with like uh i don't know like cool in game i mean you know there's so many you know what i mean like it's just use your platform it's the same thing with like like nba players and nfl players at the end of the day Right, the NFL and the NBA; these are these are places where you build your brand. These are places where you 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 steal the show and and you make as much money as possible through through what they offer you, right? Which is obviously multi million dollar contracts to 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 you know entertain and, and to be the best at what you do. But then after that, it's like, dude, you got to make hay while the sun is shining. While, like look, just look at what LeBron Le, LeBron's done, and look what Travis Kelsey uh, and and Jason Kelsey are doing right with their podcast. A lot of these, a lot of players are getting back into the you know they're commentating or they're casting, uh, like what Tony Romo's doing. And dude, you have a lot of um, credibility when you're doing that, right? And it adds it adds so much to to the, the viewer to be able to take a look inside of someone who's actually played the sport and. Uh, like what LeBron's done, he's done. Po- he's got his podcast. He's got shows, right? And 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 you know, he's got his own brand. Like you know what I mean? You build more off of what the platform gives you, and and you just do more, and and that's that's how you make money. I mean, that's how you make real money when you start blowing up. It's not on it's not on Twitch or any of these platforms to make you more money, right? They're gonna do whatever they can to make the site money, which eventually will also potentially make you money, which is great. Like that's a great wombo combo. But it's not like they need to find more ways so the creator makes money. They need to find more ways for them to make money to be profitable. So that's what they should be worrying about. And as a streamer, all you need to be worrying about is, all right, I have this many viewers. I have this audience. Like, how else can I not not monetize them? But how, you know, like, you got to be thoughtful about it. And you got to, like, and figure it out. At the end of the day, the best way to support a streamer is to follow them, have ad block off, and, you know, tell a friend about it. Like that is, you know, of course, someone could obviously just donate, you know, and gift hundreds and thousands of subs. And that's amazing. But that's, you know, those, those amazing, incredible viewers who are financially stable are few and far between. And like, it's very underrated how much help somebody can do for a streamer without giving them a cent sharing videos, right? Like watching it, watching a TikTok all the way through bookmarking it, favoriting it, sharing it, liking it, commenting on it like to, to help with the algorithm. So it, it gets and sees more people. These are the things that people can do for free to help viewers or um, to help their, their content creators that they love so much. Yeah. Wrapping it up, man, looking ahead, what would you like to see from Twitch and other streaming platforms to ensure the long-term success, long-term success and stability of the streaming industry? I mean, again, I think that they're, what they need to do is they need to find ways to make money so that we can keep streaming on these platforms. That's it. So again, I don't think they need to do things in the future for us. Um, they need to do things for them and because they're business at the end of the day. And I think that there's a lot, there are a lot of people that might hear this and they're like, I mean, you know, that's not what Twitch was founded on. And da, 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 da. it's like, listen, do you want to be able to watch your favorite streamers or not? <laughs> like, what if there's a world where all these companies just, you know, like all of this woke movement and everyone's just like, no, we don't want this. We don't want this. We don't want this. We don't want this. And eventually it's like, all right, well, listen, we can't make any money. So now we have to shut down and now you can't stream. And it's like, wait, people's tune will change very quickly. And it sucks at the end of the day that like these revenues are cut, the, the revenue split is getting cut and people, you know, they had to let go of 35% of the company. If they don't do these things, like the pot, like who knows the platform might not survive. Where would you stream then? Right? Like, 
you know, we want competitiveness. You don't only want to have to go to YouTube to watch live streams or you don't only want to go to Twitch, right? Like competition in the market is, is, is the most important thing. So just keep an open eye out, keep an open eye, I mean, open, open ear, open eye, open mind, and really just try to be thoughtful about the whole situation and support your streamers, man, support your content creators. It's, you can do, like, again, I just expressed it. That there are, it's almost more helpful to do things that don't cost money to back up your streamer and to help your streamer out and your content creator out than it is to just, you know, throw money at them, subscribe and, and do all those things as what I mentioned earlier. So I love you all. That is a wrap for this whirlwind episode. My fellow earthlings, if you enjoyed this deep dive into the world of Twitch, make sure to hit that follow button on your preferred platform, be it Spotify, Apple, or wherever you catch us. Your support fuels the AFK spaceship and we appreciate it. Every one of you. Stay tuned for more electrifying AFK episodes. And until next time, keep leveling up, keep gaming, and I'll catch you in the next one. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. With the Internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. In fact, Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash podcast free. All lowercase, shopify.com slash podcast free, shopify.com slash podcast free. (laughs) 